Hey, Torrent Tigers. This week we are talking about the Upper Peninsula, and part of the Upper Peninsula is Mackinac Island. My family enjoys going to Mackinac Island every summer. So now I'm going to read you a story. The Legend of Mackinac Island by Kathy Jo Worgan. Long, long ago, Earth was a quiet place covered entirely with water. There were no mountains or valleys. There were no forests or meadows. There was nothing but one brilliant blue sea with a dark, murky bottom far, far below. But life upon this giant world of water was dazzling and bright. It was filled with the rustling of waves, the splashing of ducks, and the jumping of quick silvery fish. There were many animals here, and their days were filled with laughter and friendship. In the morning, loons carried soft, downy chicks on their backs, keeping them warm and dry. In the afternoon, otters played silly games upon the water, rolling their long bodies between the curves of the waves. And while the other animals played, beavers bustled back and forth, slapping their flat and shiny tails upon the water. All around them, wee little muskrats tried to keep pace, their small, flat paws paddling eagerly against the waves. In the midst of these fast and playful animals was one special creature who was quiet and slow. His name was Mackinac, and he was the oldest, wisest, and largest painted turtle to live in the great blue water. Every day, Mackinac floated upon the water in a calm and steady way. And as he floated, he would lift his large wrinkled neck into the air and blink his deep round eyes. Mackinac carried the wisdom of centuries in his words and always greeted his friends with a slow upward smile. The animals were always delighted when Mackinac floated by because it, if they were cold or tired, he would let them climb upon his back to rest in the warm afternoon sun. And if they were sad, he would sing sweet and happy songs to cheer them. And sometimes when the air was still and the moment was just right, all of the animals would gather around Mackinac and listen carefully as he told them the wonderful stories about their great world of water. One day, Mackinac swam steadily toward the other animals. His old weathered face appeared quite serious, and in a low, broad voice, he told the animals how the great spirit of the sky said that now was the time to build a beautiful place of land for all the animals to rest upon. Canal then told the animals that one of them must dive through the depths of the water and bring up one handful of rich, wet soil and place it upon his back. This, said Mackinac, would be the beginning of a brand new world. The animals chattered with excitement, and the wise old turtle raised his head and spoke clearly to all of them. I shall give to you a special home upon my weathered back, where rivers run beneath the sun in red and gold and black, to rest upon the water blue, a land so new, a land so new. Naturally, Loon wanted to be the first to try, because she was the most loyal of all creatures and always willing to prove her devotion. She pulled her broad wings tightly to her back, stretched her long, graceful neck, and pointed herself toward the bottom of the world. Moments later, she was up again, without a grain of soil in her bill. Disappointed, she hopped aboard Mackinac's back to dry her feathers in the sun. Beaver, the most resourceful and hardest working of all animals, decided that he should be the next to try. He stiffened his back and twitched his nose, and with a loud slough of the tail, dove deep dip toward the bottom of the world. Small waves rolled over the spot where Beaver disappeared. A little while later, he rose to the surface holding nothing in his paws. He climbed on Mackinac's back and closed his eyes in sadness. Then Otter decided it was her turn to try. With a twist and a turn and a flip of the tail, she plunged into the depths far below. Otter bobbed up to the surface several times, each time diving deeper and deeper. Eventually, she reappeared, and with no soil in her forefeet, she slipped onto the great turtle's back and let out a long, soft sigh. The animals rested quietly on Mackinac's back, feeling very sad. While they were sitting there, Muskrat came swinging by, and the weary animals told him about their struggle to grab a handful of soil from the bottom of the world. Muskrat was eager to help his friends, so he told Mackinac and the other animals that he would dive to the dark and murky bottom far below. 
the fever and otter laughed loudly because Mus Muskrat was the smallest and most humble of creatures. His paws were tiny and his back was weak. Surely he would fail. But Mackinac did not laugh because he was kind and wise and because he was a good friend to all animals. He smiled at Muskrat and nodded his head in a slow, gentle way, approving Muskrat's offer. But the animals were still doubtful as they watched Muskrat take one long, deep breath, filling his round cheeks until they could hold no more. Then, much to their dismay, the little Muskrat closed his eyes and dove into the water. Splish, splash, swish. Little round bubbles popped up all around him as he made his way to the dim bottom far below. Loon, beaver, and otter peered into the water, certain that Muskrat would never reach the bottom. They knew the journey was very long and dark, and they believed he would return quickly with no soil in his grasp. They waited and they watched, but no muskrat. The animals waited some more, but no muskrat. Time passed and they began to worry. They felt sad that they had laughed so cruelly at their little friend. Loon let out a long, mournful cry, no muskrat. Beaver folded his busy hands and lowered his broad, dark face, no muskrat. Otter stiffened her body and sat straight and still and was unusually serious. Still no muskrat. And as they waited, dust began to fall and the water shimmered in the fading sunlight. Their anim the animals searched every wave and swell. They listened to each splash and ripple, hoping to see muskrat, but he did not reappear. The sky began to fill with a whisper of clouds and all of the animals were hushed with sadness. A giant tear rose slowly out of the corner of Mackinac's eye. Loon, Beaver, and Otter saw the tears slip down the great turtle's cheek and began to weep softly in the moonlight for the loss of their friend and the hope of a new land. But just then, whoosh, up popped Muskrat. He flew to the top of the water with tremendous force and his body was trembling with all of its might. His eyes were open wide and his cheeks were nearly blue. But wedged in the grasp of his small furry paw was the rich dark soil that was needed to make the beautiful new land. Hooray! Hooray! Mackinac nodded his large round head in approval and said, I give to you a special place where sunshine crowns the land, where flowers bloom like brilliant jewels and everywhere you stand. To float upon the water blue, a home for you, a home for you. All of the animals watched in awe as Muskrat quickly tossed a handful of soil upon the great turtle's back. Magically, the soil grew and grew and grew all around them. Rocks and trees and flowers appeared and sunlight poured down upon the bright new land, growing in the middle of the deep blue water. And as the island blossomed, the low, quiet voice of Mackinac could be heard from all around. Time will now stand still, my friends with an island rich and rare. And though we must part deep in your heart, my presence will always be there. A special land that's edged in blue. I leave this for you. I leave this for you. The animals were happy to have such a lovely place to rest. It was a beautiful and splendid island, listening paradise of peace and friendship. As the animals admired their new home, they noticed that Mackinac was gone. They began to miss the turtle very much. So in the spirit of his friendship, they talked about how kind and wise he was and how he was always how he always shared his back as a place to rest. As they talked, they realized that Mackinac was not really gone because they saw his large round back in the shape of the island and heard his deep familiar voice roll through the rocks that lined the shore. And with every wave and billow, they heard their old friend say, I give to you this brilliant land, a place for peace and rest. May forests pass and gentle waves call you as their guest. May sunshine drip like honey gold and sweetness fill the air. May diamonds fall upon the lake and always glimmer there. I leave you with an island home, my sweet and treasured friends, forever there upon my back where splendor never ends. And so to honor their wise old friend, they called the beautiful new land, Mackinac Island, the place of the great turtle's back. <laughs>